So again, I'll skip through some of the um, higher level pieces other than just to introduce the map itself in this particular case. It's the same circumstance here. This is the Madeira East project approved in April of two, 2007, also on an appeal. Um, it's just under 240 acres in size, 875 residential lots, 15 commercial office lots, three park spaces, again, supporting landscape sale lots, as well as a water treatment facility and SMUD substation that are shown here in the gray purplish color um, in the southwest corner. This is a project that actually straddles uh, White Lock Parkway, um, but is primarily framed by lots on the north and uh, White Lock on the south. Here it is in context with the balance of the Luna Ridge area. Um, sort of skip through here. Um, one key component on the request, just to highlight, um, there were, as part of the original uh, request, part of the original Planning Commission action and the City Council action in 2007, um, some conditions and modifications to the project to reflect requests by neighbors, um, particularly that portion that's um, south of White Lock, north of Poppy, the tail piece that you saw on the map. Um, essentially, they requested the location of the park be modified a little bit in that area and that a masonry wall be constructed along the eastern property line. Those conditions are staying. Uh, they're being renumbered, obviously, because the way we restructured the conditions. But they're staying in full. We're not modifying any of those particulars with the project. There is one piece, though, that is different than the last project, and this concerns the 69 kV transmission facility electrical service. Um, I want to run through this in a little bit of detail for you. Essentially, um, at build out of Laguna Ridge area, there will be a 69 kV smud transmission facility. This is a pretty high level um, electrical service line that will run the length of White Lock Parkway. Um, when the Grove and Del Webb projects went in a few years ago, there were no conditions specific to those projects, as I'll identify in a minute, that required the undergrounding of the 69 kV. Instead, there was later a request, and the applicants uh, they fulfilled that request to the city to underground that facility along White Lock. So as you drive along there or walk along the uh, White Lock today, you'll see a series of vaults in the landscape area on the north side of White Lock. Those are for the future undergrounding. The, the vaults are in, the underground corridor is in, the uh, cable has been purchased and is sitting out at Smuts Corporation Yard waiting for installation when the substation on this project uh, is necessary to go online. So there is an underground component that has been completed or would be soon. Um, but along Bruceville and Elk Grove Boulevards, there were existing and some relocated uh, 69 kV systems that are part of a loop system that Smut operates in the Elk Grove area, basically every um, uh, every section or two of the city, there is a 69 kV loop system that works. And at where these systems overlap with each other, like Elk Grove and Bruceville, uh, the system interconnects together with a series of overhead switches above the intersection. Um, so what would happen in this case, we've got the undergrounding that would happen along White Lock. There are no conditions that specifically require in the existing approval the undergrounding. Um, instead, there is this condition 115 that is a condition placed, requested by SMUD and approved by council that requires disclosure of a future underground facility to units that are adjacent to the White Lock Parkway, White Lock Parkway corridor, that there would be this um, uh, um, underground facility. But again, no condition specifically requiring it. Um, we touch base with SMUD on this issue a little bit sort of to understand things. Of course, local lines within neighborhoods are undergrounded, as are the smaller transmission facilities like the 12 kV system that's along Sheldon Road. 69 kVs can be undergrounded. It is, of course, technically feasible, but it does carry a much higher cost to an overhead system, um, easily a million dollars a mile. These operate differently than overhead facilities and that they can't have that same level of over, uh, interconnectedness that the overhead systems do. Essentially, when SMUD wants to interconnect overhead systems that cross each other, they essentially have to create a substation to do that. They don't have the ability to do all that work underground. Um, it's also harder and costlier to maintain these sorts of systems. Um, they do have better uptime in that these things are underground, so you don't have trees excuse me, growing into the lines, the canopy, you have to come through and maintain, something gets knocked over in a windstorm. But when a failure does happen, it's often a catastrophic failure that could even require the full replacement of the line. So that you know, creates a, an operational constraint for SMUD. And from that perspective, their preference is, of course, for overhead lines. You know, so they sort of can mitigate for those long-term costs in that way. 
But the city does have several policies, both at the general plan and specific plan level, as well as the zoning level, that reflect uh, desire for undergrounding facilities. I won't read these for verbatim, but essentially in the general plan, uh, LU 38 Action 1 calls for undergrounding to the extent feasible of uh, electrical systems, water systems, and whatnot. In Laguna Ridge specific plan, there are two policy points that apply. Um, the first one calls for electrical and telecommunications services, excluding primary transmission lines, that they be required to be underground as part of those projects. Um, that undergrounding of existing overhead facilities is required to the extent practical. There's no prohibition in either of these policies to the city um, ever requiring a project that has a 69 kV to do the undergrounding. It's not, it's not a straight upfront requirement in the specific plan. At least that's staff's understanding of the policies as they exist. And then finally, there are also zoning code requirements that electrical facilities also be underground to the extent feasible. As I mentioned earlier, the Grove and Del Webb projects that are at the other end of White Lock did not have this undergrounding requirement. However, the work was completed at the developer expense. Um, they were not subject to a reimbursement. We've uh, checked with finance on that, and there were no reimbursements made as of yet on that requirement. But there are options moving forward. Uh, CFD 2005-1 provides financing for various public facilities and could easily include this. Essentially, the CFD provides gap financing for when financing isn't sufficient under other financing programs. Say in the case of roadways, if there's a roadway cost that's greater than what would be covered under the roadway impact fee, this 2005-1 CFD could carry the gap difference between the two. But those funds are based upon bond availability. Um, those proceeds are unknown at this time, but in coordination with other staff, you know, could be as soon as you know, in the next five years or so. So staff's recommendation based upon the policies as we understand them would be to go ahead and condition the project explicitly to require the undergrounding of the 69 kV line and to undertake any coordination with SMUD necessary to do that, both in terms of deciding where the easements exist and how the landscaping in the White Lock Parkway area gets accomplished. And then to include the facility in the future bond proceeds for repayment under the CFD program, knowing those, uh, the timing of those is not clear at this time. As with the previous project, the environmental analysis covered under the prior action and consistent with the Lunar Ridge Specific Plan EIR. And that concludes my presentation. Happy to answer questions. Great. Thank you. Questions, Vice Mayor Detrick. The actual question this time. <clears throat> Are the existing transmission lines in easements? Um, I believe in the case of White Lock, those would be an e they should be an easement to SMUD and our underlying fee title because it's aren't, aren't the easements uh, specific on what their rights to be there are? It depends on what the easement's for. I have not looked at the actual easement language in the case of existing White Lock, and I don't think Richard knows either at this time. We could certainly review that. Because, you know, I, I do this for a living every day, and typically our transmission lines are in specific overhead easements that gives us the rights to be there and if we're required to underground if somebody else has to pick up the tab on it 100 percent we're right. in the street right away is a different story because you're there as basically a guest of the city right. under the franchise agreement right. this would be in an easement circumstance and as we've discussed with smud as is their policy if it's an overhead system it's their dime to provide per their tariff or per their operating procedures um, if it's an underground system, there is an outside cost it has to cover, which absent a fee program or some sort of funding mechanism from the city leaves it at the developer contingent. So that's where our research and recommendation on the CFD funding component would come in. Okay. Thank you. Right, any other questions for Christopher? No. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Let's declare this public hearing open and invite the applicant to speak. I believe Les Hawk is here representing the uh, applicant. Davis, uh, council members, my name is Les Hawk. I'm here on behalf of BTG Properties, um, 531 lots in the Madera East tentative map. Uh, I also have past experience and in, in, uh, uh, with respect to the prior applicants on this project, as you know. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Darren Wilson and your Public Works Department and uh, uh, Christopher Jordan on their cooperation in bringing this uh, matter to you tonight. I think they've done a great job, and the, the vast majority of the conditions of approval are uh, consistent with your uh, updated policies as it relates to major infrastructure. 
Um, the one uh, objection I do have is related to the issue that uh, Christopher just spent so much time on, and that's the new condition of approval 17, which spells out that we absolutely will put that 69 kV transmission line underground. Um, coincidentally, I worked for SMUD for about a year uh, as a new civil engineer coming out of college, and I worked on an underground 69 kV transmission line downtown and a 230 transmission line out to what was Rancho Seco. Um, the, the word transmission is for those higher power tra transmission facilities, as Councilmember Detrick knows. Uh, SMUD draws the line at, with distribution facilities. That's part of our public improvements uh, that we put in with new subdivisions. And it's been consistent in the industry that we put all of those facilities underground. We don't want to see the old wood poles behind the houses. Uh, we don't, as new developers, we don't control the transmission facilities. The 69 kV and above, SMUD determines when they go in, where they are, what's best for the alignment, best for the agency, other agencies involved, and quite often they're unrelated to the development of our, of the, and the timing of our houses out there. So um, uh, the developer I worked for in 2005 would agree to anything to get this project underway, and uh, they agreed just out of a, a request from city planning for appearance purposes to put that first phase of the, of the transmission line underground. Um, again, we didn't control the installation of that facility, but we agreed to pony up the money to SMUD uh, and the, it was about $1.2 million, as I recall, for that 6,000 feet of the line from Bruceville Road to Bighorn. That part of the Grand Parkway is much larger. SMUD's going to require an exclusive 25-foot underground easement for this 69 kV line if it goes underground. And I'm not sure we even have the room, frankly, in this section of the parkway. There's two twin 60-inch storm drains underneath the ground currently in this location. Uh, the parkway has been shrunk through the park fee program, and at least some of the builders have actually moved their maps into that shrinking area of the parkway. Um, there's another 54-inch storm drain line that's local and immediately behind the sub substation and the water proposed water treatment plant. So the question becomes, is, is there even room to put an exclusive 25-foot easement there, uh, number one? Number two, the, the economic factor is a million dollars a mile. We're not sure where we're going to get the money for that, uh, to, to pay for that. Um, Christopher had referred to CFD financing. That CFD financing in the first phase of roughly $200 million of infrastructure was uh, about 43 cents on the dollar used primarily for major roads. So there's not enough CFD financing to go, go around just for your major roads, let alone uh, bringing in some type of uh, uh, unusual cost such as this facility. Um, um, so we would want to check on that. A solution that I see for you in front of you tonight, rather than adopt these revised conditions with new condition number 17, which spells out that we absolutely will put this line underground, uh, rely on condition number 68. It, uh, it indicates that the developers will provide for an easement to the satisfaction of your Department of Public Works that, that um, a easement for the 69 kV line will be provided. Uh, if, in fact, they even put the line along Whitelock. SMUD hasn't, as of today, they haven't decided officially that's where it's going. It may go south on, on Bighorn. So um, if we were to delete uh, Condition 17 and just rely on Condition 8, ultimately, if through your public works department you want this line to be underground, that easement could be exclusively an underground easement, and that would be to the satisfaction of public works. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have for you this evening, unless there's any questions. Les, does SMUD have a, a preference on this? Uh, in my conversations with SMUD, their real estate department does not have a preference as long as someone's paying the bill to put it underground. Okay. Their maintenance department absolutely does not want it underground. It's a long-term maintenance uh, cost for them. Uh, in emergency situations, it's difficult, obviously, to access, and uh, they prefer it overhead. And that reminded me, Mayor Davis, of one other point. I did a overhead 69 kV line in North Natomas, and we put it on very large poles. They were naturally rusting poles. They looked very good when they were done, as good as a utility line could look. Uh, they were very large poles, um, but when the tree canopy grows in, the poles are above the tree canopy, and these spans between the poles are somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 feet. Uh, so over a 6,000-foot um, span between this parkway, you're looking at five or six poles. And keep in mind, whether this facility is underground or overhead, there will be poles in and around the substation site as the as they have to come out of ground, go up up above on poles, and then drop uh, vertically into the substation as well. When I asked that question, I asked it of you, but maybe I even should ask it of Christopher, because I'm illustrating what's in the staff report here this, that says SMUD staff said they prefer overhead facilities. So is, 
is that the case? Yes. Um, we met with SMUD about three, four weeks ago. Um, they share with us their utility planning. Um, the line will be going on the north side of White Lock, connecting the substation towards Highway 99, and that connects back into the loop system that would go south on um, uh, towards the mall area and the substation down in that direction. Um, so there, there is a facility that will ultimately go here. Uh, their preference is they articulate and they had folks both from design and operation in the meeting and they articulated very clearly their preference was for overhead facilities um, just because they're easier to operate, they're easier to maintain um, from their perspective, but you know, they were not about to pony up. Real estate was in the room as well. They're not ponying up the money to do an underground facility if we require it. This would be cash coming from someplace else. So for operational purposes, SMUD prefers it to be over, uh, not above, not below ground. Correct. Um, they prefer overhead systems in this case because they've got, as they described it to me, the ability to isolate cells, um, shut independent, shut sections off much more independently, rely upon their loop line, and when they have underground facilities, it's much harder to do that stuff in the field. But you all still believe, because you put this condition in here, that it should be below ground. Staff does. Based on our understanding of the policies that we have from you. Okay. We'd be looking for direction this okay. evening. All right. Thank you. Mayor Davis, may I add something? Because <clears throat> I heard Mr. Hawk talking about uh, eliminating one of the items, one of the conditions of approval to underground it, because you can accomplish the same thing by re requiring a, uh, an easement. I'm not intimately familiar with each one of these conditions, but I would suggest uh, that if council is interested in getting it undergrounding, to actually make that a, a requirement, uh, rather than try to defer it to an easement that may or may not have to require it. And I would agree as well. I mean, that's sort of the circumstance we're in today with this question of ambiguity. One condition describes there being an underground system, but doesn't blatantly articulate that there will be an underground system. So removal of condition 17, I think, puts us back in that same perspective. The staff would be looking for some clarity this evening. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, Councilman Hume. Thank you. Um, is a 69 kV considered a primary transition line, or would that be considered a distribution line? Transmission. That's a transmission? That's a transmission line. Anything, so, anything above 35,000 is considered transmission. So it, it, in section 6.5.1.1, item four specifically calls out excluding primary transmission lines and substations. So to me, the plan is actually saying the opposite of what staff is recommending and saying that these, this size line doesn't need to be underground. Uh, our read of it is that there's no upfront requirement, but we're not seeing any, from a staff perspective, we're not seeing any language today that prohibits the council from conditioning the project that way. I would agree, but there's no language either that compels us to. True. Okay. Um, I guess from, unless I think you could probably sit down. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I would look at it as that the area. Well, come on up, Jay. Jeez. I'm not here to rush. Take your time. Mayor Davis, members of the council, Jay Pollock from Taylor Morrison. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to come up and talk. Uh, Les did an outstanding job talking about the the 69 KV line. Where, as the other owner or one of the other primary owners, we wanted to to also echo that sentiment that we don't we don't think undergrounding it there is appropriate. Um, the city ultimately would have the ability to use the CFD proceeds when they became available, if you so chose to underground it at a later date uh, when those proceeds were available. Um, but I did want to raise another issue um, that that I don't know that we can well address here, but I wanted to bring to the council's attention. Um, as many of you know, we've been working on the site and, and mapping and development of the site for about six months now. Um, and just to direct your attention to, to condition 78 in the conditions of approval, it's a water agency condition related to zone 40 well sites. Um, and as many of you know, Taylor Morrison's been a major developer in the community. We've been the largest home builder in the city for the last many years. Um, and we, That wasn't a difficult uh, thing to accomplish. Uh, given yeah, the it's survival of the fittest, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless. Um, and we've been trying to accomplish con Condition 78 with, with the water agency for at least the last six months to simply dedicate to them the two well sites that they want. We've been unable to accomplish that, and frankly, are extremely frustrated. Um, at the ability to give them something that they've asked for. 
we would request that the city either remove Condition 78 and along with it Condition 79 in its entirety or to modify those conditions such that they relate only to future development on the office portion of the property, um, which would delay it to a later date. The reason being, again, we're happy to continue working with the water agency, but our plans have been sitting in their office for about six months trying to get them to sign it. The latest set of stuff back from them is likely a three-month delay to deal with additional requirements for them that they've just decided they need today, or well, about the last three weeks ago. Um, we will continue to work through those issues with them, but we think it's unreasonable that the sites that they want are not even on the residential portion of the property, and they're holding up all development on the entire site while we attempt to give them stuff in an area we're not even proposing development on today. Um, so in addition to the, the SMUD requirement, we would appreciate your consideration of, of conditions 78 and 79, again, either being modified or removed. Happy to answer any questions. Mr. Mayor, if I could, um, on both 78 and 79, the last sentence about not signing improvement plans until the applicant has entered into a purchase agreement for said well sites, that was intended to be struck before it got into your packet this evening. Uh, unfortunately, one of those things that got left as I ran out the door last week. So I apologize about that. I want to bring that to your attention. Could you repeat that, Christopher, that last part? Um, I'm 78 and 79. I'm on page 28 of your packet. The final sentence of those two conditions, SCWA will not sign improvement plans until the applicant has entered into a purchase agreement for said well sites. Those sentences were intended to be removed before they got into your packet this evening. And has SCWA been uh, made aware of, of that? We've been in correspondence with them for the last you know, better part of a month and a half regarding that and staff's concern. We believe there's an inconsistency with Subdivision Map Act regarding it and have brought it to their attention. Um, unfortunately, they, they were unable to provide us with their um, concurrent understanding of the Map Act or final resolution on the issue before your packet went out. So does just striking uh, uh, that portion of the condition uh, accomplish what Mr. Pollock was getting to? I, I believe so. It would certainly allow them to move forward with their improvement plan preparation and finalization. Um, and for these things, really the intent is for these well sites to be reserved at the time of final map. And certainly you want your improvement plans, the construction documents for the roads and utilities to be coordinated with the final map. Um, and that still, of course, needs to happen. Um, my understanding, and uh, Mr. Wilson's as well from Public Works, is that there's been some discussion about locating these sites in the office areas um, along the highway. From city staff perspective, we think this makes a, a, a good deal of sense. There's a lot more right of way to get those raw water lines in and loop them back over to the treatment facility. But there's certainly some final location and testing that SCWA wants to complete identifying they've got the proper spacing from utilities that they have, um, that that wellhead would actually function properly and meet all the state guidelines. And there's a lot of hoops they want to go through. And from our understanding of MAP Act, the trigger for all of that is final MAP, not the improvement plans. You have to prepare your improvement plans before you can get to final MAP. Right. Okay. Do you feel that that sufficiently addresses your concerns? No. Um, we, we appreciate the, the flexibility and, and, again, the SCWA requirements to date have been, been absolutely crazy uh, when the requirement today is not that it be done by improvement plans. So it's, it's sort of getting us back to where we were. Um, I, I think the important issue in it is both the city and SCWA acknowledge that they don't want the well sites within the residential portion of the project. But yet, even though they don't want them there, they're still holding up the residential portion of the project until the well sites are dedicated in a portion that's not even being, there, there's no attempt to do improvement plans, there's no attempt to final map that office portion of the site. Um, so it's sort of a, a chicken and the egg. They want it all today, even though we're not asking for anything to happen in those areas. And, and just to give some perspective, they're asking that we not only offer to dedicate the sites, but they actually, that, that they drill the hole and test the water before they're willing today to sign our improvement plans, which, it, again, just as from a developer standpoint, it's crazy. I'm not, I'm not doing anything in the area where the well sites are going to be. They don't want to be where I'm doing anything. They've been abundantly clear about that. The city's been abundantly clear that they don't want them in the residential portion, but yet I can't do anything. If the well sites were to fail, there's no other option on my site anyway. They would move to a different site in its entirety, but yet I can't. 
I can't get forward. Um, honestly, I wish I was in front of you with a, hey, I want you know, some specific language to deal with this, but I think we really just want it stricken from the residential portion of the project altogether and say that that condition is satisfied when the commercial lots go forward. It essentially takes the control from SCWA and gives it back to the city where it belongs for where those well sites are located. You have our commitment to continue to work through it with SCWA. We have no desire it, that the locations that they've selected, we're, we're open to. We would happily dedicate those sites to them today. They won't even let us give them to them. So again, you, I, you can clearly sense my frustration if we've tried to work through it, tried to work through it, tried to work through it, and we just can't, we can't figure out how to get to the end in any process that gets us there in a timely fashion. And so, so I assume that you'll be coming forward or someone will be coming forward with future map applications and future conditions of approval for those office Absolutely. Uh, yep, absolutely. Those parcels are part of the map before you this evening. So if you wanted to, as Mr. Pollock's suggesting, um, locate, sort of force the location onto those office sites that are along the highway, doing it through the condition tonight is the opportune time. Uh, to, to echo what he's saying, though, Planning and Public Works staff understand from SCWA that that's their concurrence as well. We're all preferring of sites in the BP areas along the highway. But again, there are some procedural steps that the water agency has to go through. And this has been a, a, an issue on several other projects as well. OK. Well, I would prefer uh, codifying it with some language that shifts it over to the, uh, the office sites. Yeah, as, long, as long as we agree. can craft the language, yeah. I could support it that way. That that way, you know, you're covered, we're covered, everybody's covered. It Absolutely. sounds like it's the preferred alternative. It just is not clear. Correct. I, I think I have a suggestion. It might be a simple suggestion that will fix this for the applicant, for the council, and for staff. Before both those conditions, just add the phrase for the commercial sites only, and then the rest of the condition will flow. So I put that out for both the applicant and staff to see if that'll work. Yeah, my recommendation on condition 78, uh, the first sentence would read, the applicant shall reserve two 100 by 100 well, well, water well sites to be located at a future date on the BP sites of the map and necessary easements to the satisfaction of SCWA. And by virtue of the map, we've That's why he's a planner. I'm just a lawyer. So that sounded better. Yeah, okay. Work. You're, together, you're a dangerous combination. Yeah. Uh, is it your sense SCWA will be okay with that? Um, I, I think what, if we word it in this way, there's more than, the BP site is not just on Taylor Morrison's property, there's also the Zender property to the north. This may give them the flexibility to look at a variety of locations along this full corridor, the old West Stockton corridor that's there today. Um, I, I will say, based on our conversations with the water agency on a variety of projects, they get very concerned when their opportunity to look at multiple sites and consider a whole range as the projects develop is taken away from them. They've had issues in the past, most notably in the East Franklin area, where um, projects were coming in and didn't have these broad brush conditions with a lot of flexibility, like the condition without all the modifications we're talking about this evening. And it was putting them in a condition where they were having trouble providing water service. Um, that I think we've addressed those issues between our agencies, this, the, the issues that were causing those through our procedures over the last decade or so. It's less of a problem. Um, we do a lot greater detail of mapping out where these well sites go, how the infrastructure works. Um, I think Luna Ridge is a testament to that process working a lot more effectively. But there is still a systemic concern from the water agency that every opportunity for a project to come forward is another opportunity to get well sites identified even if they are more of a broad brush condition. Christopher, okay. will that language take care of 78 and 79? Uh, 79, I would recommend leaving as is. The map identifies the location for it along White Lock adjacent to the high school. Um, that would cause a number of issues to relocate. SMUD and the water agency have been counting on that location and have been refining the final alignment, the final location, the final parameters. I think this is really just a well site issue. Okay. Um, it will affect all of the map ultimately and all the owners. Taylor Morrison just happens to be first in line for their final map. But we'll still strike the last sentence where it, it seeks I would encourage you to do so, yes. <laughs> and then so now I think that brings back to the uh, transmission line issue. And I can I can see both sides of that. I can I can really understand the desire from an aesthetic standpoint of this major uh, 
trail corridor parkway um, to have the consistency with what's west of Bruceville. But the flip side of it is, is uh, west of Bruceville, you have the large uh, drainage corridor, whereas east of Bruceville is just a, a, a narrow landscape strip. And so at the end, I think you have to do kind of a cost benefit analysis of whether or not that's money well spent. Uh, if, like uh, Mr. Hawk says, that the poles would be above the, the tree line canopy and, and so fairly um, unobtrusive uh, once the landscape matures a little bit. So I, I'm, I can see the, the compelling reasons to uh, require it, but I can also understand um, from a financial standpoint how it kind of uh, it seems to be throwing an, an excessive amount of money at something that SMUD themselves would prefer not to have to deal with. So and if I'm, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, wood transmission with underground distribution is what we have everything south of Elk Grove Boulevard on Bruceville. We have the overhead transmission, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're correct. Uh, you know, so and basically, it's anywhere from three to six wires, usually, uh, depending on how if they would do one or two circuits. It only has one circuit, so it'd be, th it'd be three wires, probably 715, which is or a million, which is approximately the size of a quarter per wire. Span lengths may, might be a little long less, but. So I'm, I'm looking okay. for further council uh, okay. discussion on that. I could go either way. I mean, I, th there's no question that the aesthetics of 100% underground is much nicer. No question. Well, I've, I've got an engineer here, uh, works for one utility, and I've got SMUD, uh, you know, suggesting uh, both sort of the, seems like sort of the same thing, and that's uh, to go overhead. So I, I kind of tend to land there. Well, the only th question I have to Christopher, you said there's a they put conduits and uh, boxes in already on? Yeah, the, yeah, in the section from Bruceville to Bighorn and just a little past actually to I think almost if not just past the driveway into the high school middle school complex. Um, the conduits in, the vaults are in, the line's been purchased and is sitting at some courtyard. And has is, is that line been paid for for that section? Yep, completely. It's paid in full. Smud's just waiting on the development to occur so they reach the need to install. So how much di additional footage are we talking about? Um, I'd have to bring the map up for comparison. Um, I think we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of a mile, um, maybe just a little bit under to get from, because you essentially need to get from Lots Parkway, would be the terminus of this line, and back to the substation. So I mean, that just kind of bothers me a little bit that we've already gone through the whole underground process on, would that be about half of it? Yeah, in terms of the Laguna Ridge area, this is the other half. Yeah, I'm, uh, if I if jump in here, so the what's already been set up to be undergrounded is in front of the area that's been developed already. And the substation is between that area. Yeah, so if you look, Everything to the left is the existing underground that you're talking about. And then we would be talking about everything to the right. Correct? Correct? So there's just, so essentially right in front of the high school you think has been already done. So from the substation out to Bruceville isn't in question. That will be right. undergrounded. That, is, that will be underground. Not affected by the tonight's decision. decision. The vaults are in. Done. Okay. And so we would just be looking at whether or not to underground the portion from the substation to the freeway? A little bit in advance of the substation, actually, where the vault ends is relative to the high school entrance. But I think you said that it has to come out of the ground to drop down into the substation anyway? If the, yeah. yeah, usually it's not, it's not going to be that tall of a pole. It's going to be probably under 50 foot compared to putting a, you know, 80, 80 foot pole up. They usually can come up out of the ground into some kind of, and they call it a tree. Uh, so, depending on the height of the substation, and yet it has to be, you know, and drop in because. And then the the sorry, Chris, the okay. the wire that you mentioned that's sitting at Smud's yard, is that for the existing or is that for what we're talking about tonight? That's for the Bruceville to Bighorn section. Okay, so again, that, that's it's it's all done. 
Irrespective of, of, of whether or not we condition future undergrounding. Yes. Okay. So, so that substation's not even in right now. The substation's not in. SMUD is still doing their design. They'll get back to doing their design soon. <clears throat> to me, that's a different situation. I support where the, the existing underground is because of, because of the drainage creek. It's a, it's a little uh, larger area. Uh, so then it comes back to whether or not we want to impose it on the future segment. I think I heard from right. you, Mayor, that you would land on the side of not imposing. Correct, yeah. Because that's SMUD's preference. And let's go ahead and open public comment, um, close it because nobody signed up to speak. And then we've had some discussion here, but the applicant does have a chance to uh, uh, provide closing remarks if you'd like. Les? Les, do you, is there anything you'd like to add to this discussion uh, as you get to do closing remarks? points of clarification uh, back to the water uh, facilities uh, BTG is property owner that that controls the property where the future six acre water treatment plant will land uh, and in this map it's immediately adjacent to Little Red Square that is the proposed mud substation site and we are in negotiations with the water agency currently they're doing um, their analysis their CEQA documents and what have you and they should generate a, a, a purchase and sale agreement for that site shortly um, in addition to that, I, I concur with Jay. They've indicated a uh, preference to land the two well sites over on the commercial property. Uh, taking the language out of that condition certainly will help. Um, and make sure you catch it in both locations. There's one in the middle of the, of the condition as well. But we will still be at the mercy of uh, Sac County Water Agency to get our plans approved, though, because uh, you know they the, ultimately their raw water facilities land in these roadways, and they they need to know what these, where these wells are going to land. So we'll do whatever we can to to expedite that. Um, but but certainly taking a little bit of the teeth out of the uh, conditions might help uh, push them along in that regard and anything certainly public works could do to assist us to push them is always certainly welcome um, uh, if there's any other questions on the overhead 69 kV line yeah we did already fund the undergrounding of the line from Bruceville to Bighorn and past Bighorn up to the location where smud would terminate it before going overhead into the and then dropping down into the substation so that, that portion is all fully financed and done, uh, and as you know, landscaped above it today. And there's a full exclusive 25-foot easement overlying that underground facility today. And we landed the, the large sidewalk on top of it to further protect it. Um, but again, that's a much wider corridor over there, and we don't have the conflicts that we do on, on this smaller corridor with the underground drainage facilities. We will have to put joint trench facilities through this area underground as well. Um, and then ultimately sound walls, sidewalks, and landscape corridors. So that's that's a real valid concern for us. Uh, one other observation is, and I don't think SMUD has made the decision to go this direction uh, with the with the, continu the continuation of the 69 kV line. As I mentioned earlier, they may come back out of the substation, cross back over, and go down Bighorn as opposed to east on Stockton uh, or on uh, Whitelock Parkway. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, great. All right, thank you. Let's declare this public hearing closed. Um, any other thoughts on this item? Yep. Yeah, my, cons my concern would be is if you, one, if you ever want to underground it ever, you do it now because nothing's worse than trying to go in after and boring and landscaping and uh, trying to, if you have to buy easement rights in the future, it's going to be astronomically expensive. Uh, I think one of my concerns would be is if we don't even have a defined route from SMUD relative to the transmission for 100% from what Les is saying, <clears throat> that's a whole other problem as well. So I think that needs to be resolved before we make a decision on this. Uh, now my understanding from staff and the exhibits they've showed me, there will be a facility, a 69 kV single circuit line running from the substation towards Highway 99. Well, anybody else want to care to weigh in? Any thoughts? So where are we on the overhead versus the underground? I think we have one for, one against, and one uh, either way. I wasn't sure. So I, you seem to go the way. I had, wasn't clear where the vice mayor was. Maybe here where uh, Councilman Cooper is. Well, for just real, where I'm at with it is we, we required it 
and it was done from White Lock to there. That's going to be our uh, new freeway interchange. It'll be another main ingress and egress out of the city. If that was a condition that was placed and agreed to in the past, if as long as the applicants reimbursed through a funding mechanism, I, I could support that. I, I don't. Th I think the burden, putting the burden of 100 percent of the cost back on the applicant, though, is uh, is not right for transmission. Well, I would only support it if there were a funding mechanism for reimbursement. But, however, I think you have to look at uh, you, you only have so much bonding capacity within Laguna Ridge. And is a million dollars spent on undergrounding this one transmission line equal to a uh, million dollars for the children's discovery experience at the Civic Center, for example, or performing arts space or whatever? So I, that, that's where I'm hung up is, is the cost benefit. Are you, are you getting a million dollars worth of benefit of just putting Becky, maybe one you mile could, Maybe you could explain the funding mechanism on is, is it the way it was explained by Council Member Hume that you, you only have one or the other or is there a different fun, funding mechanism for this type of project? The project would be eligible for the CFD funding if the council um, determined that it was a necessary facility. However, the funding is not sufficient for all the infrastructure that will be installed, as Les Hawk mentioned earlier. So there would have to be um, some facilities that would get partially reimbursed to no reimbursement. And that has been a decision in the past and will continue to be so as the d development continues. So it may not be as broad of a trade-off as I suggested, but it would still be you'd have to pick a winner, so to speak. The developer would identify which facilities were priorities for reimbursement, and then they would be processed in that order and recommended for council. My sense is there's probably other higher priority infrastructure. That's kind of where I'm falling. I'm not going to die on the sword on this one. We appreciate that. Is, right. that. is that where we are? I'll, the... I'll make the motion then okay. to uh, adopt the resolution staff's recommendation with the uh, changes discussed here this evening. Right. And just to summarize those, what I'm hearing is the deletion and renumbering of Condition 17, which um, in your draft will require the undergrounding, so you'd be deleting that. Rel uh, related Conditions 15 and 68 that discuss mud facilities would remain unchanged. You also have changes articulated on Condition 78 relative to reserving those well site locations on the BP zone property and the removal of language uh, requiring uh, first of either final map or signing of improvement plans, whichever occurs first, to simply be the final map and signing the improvement plans, the last sentence of 78 and 79 also being deleted. Did you say deletion of 17? Uh, 17 is the undergrounding condition. So, if I'm oh, I thought you you were recommending that it be modified, right? You said don't delete it. Let's modify it to uh, represent the overhead versus the underground. Oh no! What we would do in this that was actually on condition 68. There was a recommendation, I think, by Mr. Hawk to delete 17 and leave 68, and that gave you the flexibility to still get the undergrounding later. If I'm understanding council's direction correctly, you're not interested in requiring the developer to do the undergrounding. Therefore, 17 would go away. Okay. 68, which is just maintaining an easement for 69 I just thought I heard you say earlier that you prefer we keep 17 but modify it. So I guess I heard you wrong. But only if you're requiring the undergrounding. Yeah, okay, got it. All right. I'll, okay. second, I'll second that. So that's our motion. Are we clear? Uh, we've got a second. Any other discussions, comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. We, uh, we have no regular agenda action items tonight, just all public hearings, and so uh, we're adjourned.